to say welcome to all the Bible Speaks viewers and we'd like to grant you God's speed and today we're going to deal with a lesson here on the Bible Speaks called deny yourself and not God. I'm going to be your teacher today brother Sidney and this is the reader for today brother Larry and come in bringing you the word of truth with your soul and your mind love for salvation where we come teaching and preaching the words of God and even reading the things that we believe on and I'm going to pick this lesson up in Titus the first chapter and once again this lesson is titled deny yourself and not God because sometimes that's a hard thing to do for us to deny ourselves the things that we uh, love to do the things that we set forth ourselves to do, even sometimes we do a thing and say, someone asks, well, why did you do that? Because I wanted to. <laughs> sometimes it's just that simple. But we're going to pick this lesson up, as I said, in Titus. I have several scriptures that I want to cover, so I'm going to get right into it. Titus chapter 1, and I want you to pick it up at verse 1, my brother. Titus 1 and 1. Go ahead. Paul, a servant of God, an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledging of the truth, which is after godliness. Now, the acknowledging of the truth, which is after what? Godliness, because you must acknowledge this truth to be considered or deemed as a godly person. If you're not going to acknowledge the word of God, how can you be deemed as a godly person? Skip down to verse 14 and read it. Not giving heed to Jewish fables okay. and commandments of men uh -huh. that turn from the truth. What, what turn men from the truth? Commandments of men. See, the commandments of God will turn you to God. Commandments of men will turn you from the truth. And you have to deny these things. Go ahead and read. Unto the pure, all things are pure. Okay. Unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. Now, unto them, unto the pure, all things are pure. And unto those that are unbelieving, even their conscience is defiled, the scriptures teach us. Go ahead and read. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. Their conscience and their mind is defiled from what? From the teachings of God, because they follow the commandments of men. Go ahead and read. They profess that they know God. Okay, some here, they profess that they know God, but go ahead. But in works, they deny him. In works, people works actually deny God, because some men do not want to deal with the Lord's holy days, his feast days. They don't want to deal with the Sabbath day, which is the seventh day of the week. So in their works, they deny them, even in words. And we're going to look at this in this lesson. Go ahead and finish it. Being abominable and disobedient. Okay. And unto every good work, reprobate. Now, you see how that says, it says that these in works, they deny God and they are abominable, disobedient, and unto every good work, they are reprobated. It's some evil that comes with going to go forth to do a good work. You have the Bible in your hand, but you teach contrary. You read the Bible, but you don't believe what's, what's said there. Well, I don't believe that scripture. I don't believe that uh, God uh, 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 hates anyone. When you read that the Lord say, I bore them and they have bored me. But now let's go into uh, Exodus chapter 32, because sometimes we'll even deny the word of God is right. We'll say, hey, King James messed the Bible up. <laughs> Some people teach that. Did King James mess the Bible up? No, it's that we are messed up and we have to make changes. We have to make corrections in our life. Not God, God's word is not uh, uh, incorrect. Now, let's go into Exodus 32 and we're gonna pick it up at verse one. Cause one thing about this Bible, it's either saying that you can do the will of God or you cannot. It's not saying both. Some people act like it's saying you, you can't do the will and you can do the will. 
You got to figure out what is the Lord saying? It said we are all have sinned and come up short of the glory, but you can perform the will of God. It said we can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. So you have to put these scriptures together and understand the overall meaning of what the Lord is showing you. Now, we're going to go into Exodus 32, and I want you to pick it up at verse 1, my brother. Go ahead and read it. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, mm -hmm. the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron okay. and said unto him, <laughs> uh -huh. Up, make us gods, which shall go before us. Okay. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of Egypt, on the land of Egypt, we want not what has become of him. Now, sometimes you have the man of God leading forth, going in the ways of God, teaching the ways of God. He said, man, I don't know what's going on with him. <laughs> God ain't working with him anymore because <laughs> maybe he make a decision that's not that's contrary to what you think. But is he going with the will of God? You have to understand this. Is he reading from the Bible? Go ahead and read. And Aaron said unto them, uh -huh. break off the golden earrings, which are in the ears of your wives of your sons and of your daughters and bring them unto me. Now, I, I, I'm going to come back to that point where it told, they told Moses, they said, what up? Make us gods that shall go before us. Now, what you about to do? You about to go with your own will or you going to go with the will? Is it God's will that you make gods to go before you? Or should you understand that he goes before you and understand who he is and understand when he is before you, that you doing the, that you keeping the truth and you operating in the commandments of God. Not in the commandments of men, which turn you from the truth. Okay, go ahead and read. And all the people break off the golden earrings, which were in their ears, mm -hmm. and brought them unto Aaron. And he received them at their hand. Okay. And fashioned it with a graven tool, after he had made it a molten calf. Okay. And they said, these be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. See, I, like I said, even through words, you can deny God. These be thy gods, O Israel, that have brought you up out of the land of Egypt. Don't deny God. Deny yourself from the things that we like to say. Sometimes we like to go contrary to the word of God. Skip down to verse 7 and read it. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go, get thee down, for thy people, which thou broughtest out of the <laughs> land of Egypt, have corrupted themselves. Have corrupted themselves. Look, God, looking at this, and God listens to words that are spoken out of our mouth. And it's a, rec it's a record that's kept. Go ahead and read. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. Out of the way what? That I commanded them. That's right. See, sometimes you turn aside quickly to go with the commandment of men. Go ahead and read. They have made them a molten calf. Okay. And have worshipped it. And have sacrificed thereunto and said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Okay, go ahead. And the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. See, the Lord called it a stiff-necked people when you go forth and start saying things that's contrary to what God has given you. Go ahead and read. Now, therefore, let me alone, that my wrath may wax hot against them. Wait, what them. the Lord wanted? He said, <laughs> the Lord told Moses, man, go ahead, leave me alone, Moses, because I want to get. See, that's why sometimes somebody try to talk to you with a cop. No, nah, man, leave me alone right now. I'm upset because you want to be upset sometimes. See, look at the Lord. But the Lord had an opportunity and a right to do what he will. Sometimes, you know, that's what we need, a, a calm voice to calm us down. Because you don't need to be upset because you do something in the flesh, doing your own will. But go ahead and read. That I may consume them, and I will make of thee a great nation. Look at what sometimes I see the Lord, when you can start going with your own will and saying things out of your mouth that's contrary to God's word, God's wrath will wax hot. And even be, be prepared to consume you. Didn't it say kiss the sun? Let she perish when his anger is kindled just a little bit. Let's go into Deuteronomy 32. See, they told Aaron, up, make us gods, right? Why didn't they just get up and do that? Because, see, you look for the minister to come forth with some things. We're going to look at this in this lesson. That's why they told Aaron, up, make us gods to go before us. They got to grab the high priest to do this and, and, and convince him to teach, to bring some things forth. The man of God. See, it's, 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 we're going to look at how this thing is working out because you got always somebody who's going to rise up and deny the Lord and promote ungodliness because that's what's going to happen. Now, let's go into uh, Deuteronomy 32 and pick it up at verse 15 this time. Deuteronomy 32 and verse 15. OK, brother, go ahead and read. But just around wax fat and kick. See, that's what people do. Sometimes you get real. <laughs> you're doing real well. Your house, uh, you uh, got abundance of goods in your house. You got a, 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 a multi, you got cars. You got money in the bank. Clothes on you. I mean, you got a wardrobe full of clothes in the uh, closet. 
and you get fat and then you start kicking against God, man. I can't keep the Sabbath this week because I got to work so I can make this overtime because I got to pay these bills. Go ahead and read. Thou art waxing fat. Thou art grown thick. Okay. Thou art covered with fatness. Mm -hmm. Then he forsook God, which made him. And lightly esteemed a rock of his salvation. See, you see what happens? Then when you get uh, doing real well, the Lord is blessing you. You're doing real well. Then you wax fat and you kick and forget that God is the rock of yours and that he was the one that's blessing you. The reason why you had good health, why you had a good bank account to be able to work hard to get money or to come up with some great ideas. The Lord was helping your mindset. Go ahead and read. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. Okay. With abominations provoked they him to anger. Now go ahead and read what it say. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God. What? Go ahead. To gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up. Like the Lord going to be well pleased when you go with your own will and start sacrificing unto the devil. Yeah, the devil got a doctrine also. <laughs> see, see, people don't understand about that. That's why I said some are giving heed in these last days to doctrines of devils and these commandments of men, which turn you from the truth. Go ahead and read. Whom your fathers feared not mm -hmm. of the rock that begot thee, thou art unmindful. You think the Lord is going to be pleased when you are mindful of the rock that begat you? No, sir. That keep you going? How you move and live and have any being? Go ahead. And has forgotten God that formed thee. Uh-huh. See, you provoke God by denying him, by forgetting him, and, or lightly esteem him. Well, you know, God is good some of the time. Even some people that don't have a lot of knowledge say God is good all the time. They know that much. But some people, well, God do me well. God be okay. Okay. God is all. Go ahead and read. The first and the last. Go ahead and read. And when the Lord saw it, it abhorred him. It, it, he abhorred them. When the Lord saw that, he abhorred them. Oh, he he didn't just hate the sin. Yeah, he, hated them. he said he abhorred them. Go ahead and read, brother. Because of provoking of his sons and of his daughters. See, when you provoke God and you lightly esteem him or you forget him or you deny him, we're going to look at how the Lord looks at this. So we have to be careful and watch how we perform and how we think about things. And even make sure that we go on according to the truth. Go ahead and read. And he said, I will hide my face from them. Do you think you're going to do well when the Lord hide from you? Go ahead. I will see what their end shall be. Okay. But they are a very forward generation. Children whom is no faith. Second Peter chapter 2. Children that is no faith and whom is no faith. The Lord, that's how you deny God if you don't believe on him and believe his power and esteem him as he should be esteemed. Let's go into Second Peter chapter two, and we're going to pick it up at verse one. Second Peter two and one. We're going to see how these attitudes are brought in. You know, when you uh, when you start lightly esteeming God, denying Him, forsaking Him, forgetting Him, all these things. Let's see how this uh uh uh, uh comes about with these type of attitudes. Second Peter two and one. Go ahead and read. But there were false prophets. Also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you. Uh-huh. It's false teachers among us. Mm -hmm. Every day is the Lord's Sabbath day. Worship God how you want. Where did you get this from? That ain't in the, according to the scriptures of truth. Go ahead and read. Who privately shall bring in damnable <laughs> See, heresy. It's private. <laughs> you know, they go have a private meeting and come out and teach these days. But bring in, they're going to bring in some damnable hearsays. Some they heard. From another generation. Go ahead and read. Even denying the Lord that bought them. Do, denying the Lord that bought them. Mm -hmm. See, now, you know the Lord Jesus Christ is the one that shed his blood for us, died for our sins. That was a great, he paid a great price with his life that we might be saved and redeemed. So now, the repayment he get is for men coming forth with damnable hearsays and denying the Lord that bought them, purchased them with his own blood. Go ahead. See, this is serious uh, business. Go ahead and read it. And bring upon themselves swift destruction. Uh-huh. And, th th and it'll be a swift destruction because you have people that's preaching and believing that you do not have to keep God's law because you got these false teachers. You have these 
false preach, uh, uh, preachers coming in, bringing in these damnable hearsays. It, 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 it'll get you damnation to say, oh, you don't have to keep God's law. Christ did it all. <laughs> Go ahead and read it, brother. And many shall follow their pernicious ways. By reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Go, and a lot of people follow in their destructive ways. Go ahead and read it. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you. Mm -hmm. Whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not. Okay. And their damnation slumbereth not. See, the Lord said their damnation ain't going to slumber around. It's going to come upon them. Even suddenly. They're going to think everything is well and peaceful. The earth is all right with me. And then next thing you know. Here come destruction from the Lord. Go ahead and read. For if God spared not the angels that sinned. See, you don't understand that if God didn't spare the angels that sinned. Go ahead. But cast them down to hell. Okay. And delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. Go and the Lord know how to reserve men unto the judgment. See, that's sometimes what it is. The Lord let a man prolong his days and his ways. If you want to forsake me and forget me. Okay, I'll let you prolong on. You want to sacrifice to the devil and not to God? Okay, you put long gone, but it's a judgment and it's a reservation. You got a reservation now right. with death. Go ahead and read. And spare not the old world, but save Noah, the eighth person. People forget about this. The Lord didn't spare the old world. He uh, only saved Noah, uh, eight people. Go ahead and read. A preacher of righteousness. Oh, a preacher of what? Righteousness. Not, not, not a preacher of uh, uh, false doctrine. Right. A preacher of righteousness. A preacher of the truth. Go ahead and read. Bringing in the flood upon the world of ungodly. He bring, uh, the, he bring in a flood on ungodly people. See, that's why you got to deny ungodliness. Don't deny God. Deny yourself and ungodly. Say, hey, I'm ungodly. I have sinned. That's what we must say. You can't say, oh, man, I, I, I'm doing well. I'm perfect in my ways. <laughs> Job said, if I, if I call myself perfect, I'll prove myself perverse. If I said I'm perfect. Go ahead and read. Skip down to verse 9, my brother, and continue. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the ungodly out of temptations. Okay. And to reserve the unjust until the day of judgment to be punished. You see how this day of judgment is, is looking at? The Lord said, I'm going to get way back in Deuteronomy and see what they end going to be. How, what they going to do in the end? Because in the end, you're going to have to give an account for your words and your works before the Lord. That's why I said in works, they deny him being abominable, disobedient and unto every good work a reprobate. You don't want to be reprobate man against God because Lord also said he turns some to a reprobate man and they do things that are not convenient. Men with men. And then they'll turn and teach you that, oh, yeah, man can be with a man. That's not the truth in the Bible. But we're going to go further in this lesson. Let's go get some good knowledge because uh, the Bible gives us knowledge, right? It, get, it tells you about godliness and ungodliness, what it is all about. The Lord lets you know. He make a clear picture so you can know. He gives you examples of ungodliness. But let's go into Romans 3 and 3 and let's go get a good piece of knowledge on what the Lord say that men need to know here. Romans 3 and 3. And pick it up at verse 3. Romans 3 and verse 3. Go ahead and read it. For what if some did not believe? Uh, what if some don't believe? Now, see, that's what the Lord said. They, uh, he said that children in whom is no faith. And you see what the Lord said. He said he abhorred them because these children, they didn't have any faith. And the Lord sought to even destroy them. But go ahead. Uh, uh, go ahead and read. He said, for what if some don't believe? Go ahead. Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Just because they don't believe you think the word of God going to be made of no effect? <laughs> Just because people don't believe if God hears his word on what everybody believes, how, how, how would the word stand uh, strong and faithful? How would the word stand sure <laughs> if it's according to what this brother, what this sister think, what this brother believe, what I feel <laughs> if the Lord based his word on that? Right. No, nah. go ahead and read. God forbid. God forbid. Go ahead. Yeah. Let God be true. But every man alike. Let God be true and every man alike. See, we have to understand that too. Let God be true. Let the word of God be true and let every man be a liar. Don't say, hey, King Jane put some bad information in that Bible. <laughs> this is the word of God. Either it's the word of God or it's the word of King James. I see 
the Lord said, uh, 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 don't have no other gods before me. I didn't see that that said King James said had no other God or remember the Sabbath for the Lord. Remember the Sabbath day of King James. No, that's why people, they start using their own terminology and they deny the Lord with their words, and even with their works. Go ahead and read it. As it is written. As it is what? As it is written. Written. You have to read what's written. Go ahead. That thou mightest be justified in thy saying. Go ahead. And might is overcome when thou art judged. And may it's overcome when thou what? Judge. You see how this judgment be popping up in these scriptures? Because the Lord is going to have his judgment. Right. He will judge man according to his works, as he said. So now that's why you have to uh, uh, watch how if you do follow in men's pernicious ways, because you have because uh, these preachers, they rise up and, and, and act like the Bible is wrong and speak like that. Let's go into Jeremiah chapter five. They figure they are smart and right. And the Bible is wrong or you got even people to say, hey, I got to I got to see what my uh, preacher said. I'll go to see what my preacher teach <laughs> or my preacher don't teach that. <laughs> you just read out the Bible. Thou shalt not steal. Well, my preacher don't teach that. <laughs> so what are you going to go with? You're going to deny the Bible. Or you're going to deny yourself because you want to steal. So since your preacher don't teach that, that's OK. Or you read something about the Bible, I got to go ask, thou shalt not kill. I got to go ask my pastor what that means. <laughs> I mean, this is what we come to. But since there's so many false prophets laying around, let's go into Jeremiah chapter 5 and verse 25, my brother. 5 and 25. Go ahead and read it. Your iniquities have turned away these things, and your sins have withholding good things from you. Your iniquity turned away good things from you and your sins. That's what, and you see what the Lord said he did to them angels that sin. He cast them down. The Lord ain't, ain't had no pleasure to let you uh, stand with him and stand in his sight. That's right. You want to lie and, and, and condemn the word of God and say the word is wrong or something wrong with God's law. The law can't save you. But the Lord said, if you're doing things contrary to the law, you will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. But go ahead and read. Skip down to verse 29 and read that. Shall I not visit for these things? Say of the Lord. See, the Lord talking about making a visitation. I'm going to visit for these things. I'm going to come see people and I, I'm going to uh, uh, have a judgment that I'm coming with. I got a reward. Right. <laughs> Go ahead. Shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? Such a people as this that say things contrary to God's word. Go ahead. A wonderful and horrible thing is committed in the land. Now, it's a wonderful and a horrible thing that's committed in the land. It's it's wonderful because you wonder how do the preachers just say you don't have to keep God's commandments anymore. And the people just think, oh, we don't. That's like that's OK. It's, and it's horrible because how you going to one the Lord, you're going to deny the one that bought you with his own blood and then turn and say you don't have to do his command, his, his will, because his will is to keep his commandments. Go ahead and read, brother. The prophets prophesy falsely. The prophets do what? Prophesy falsely. See, he told you about the false prophets. He told you about these uh, uh, false teachers that's bringing in damnable hearsays, denying the Lord. Where they at? Go ahead and read. And the priests bear rule by their means. The priests bear rule by how they feel, how they, what they mean. Well, see, this is what we teach in our... But it's supposed to be according to the Bible. If you're a Christian, you're supposed to be a follower of Christ. And the word of Christ is written in the pages of this book. Go ahead and read. And my people love to have it so. And you can even read about the anointed one in the Old Testament. Go to Psalm 45. You read about the son that the Lord, the father sent his son. This anointed one was written in the page of the old book, too. So you uh, we have to obey him. Go ahead and read. And what will ye do in the end thereof? He said the people love to have it that way. He loved the, pre the preacher uh, uh, tell you, hey, God loves you anyway, despite what you have done. But why did he cast some off? Why did he say he abort some? Let's go into um, let's go into Luke chapter nine. The preacher, they teach you. Uh, they tell you they turn around. They prophesy falsely. They won't. They can't read out the Bible, but they'll tell you, see, smoking and drinking and dancing is sin. And people go with that, but they haven't read that. But we, when we tell you 
It's a sin to go contrary to God's commandments. Oh, well, brother, I don't believe that. <laughs> if you love me, keep my commandments, the book say. What if you don't love them? You ain't going to keep the commandments. <laughs> Let's go on Luke 9 and chapter 22. I mean, verse 22, Luke chapter nine and verse 22 and read verse 22, my brother. Saying the son of man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be slain and be raised the third day. Now, see how Jesus has said the son of man, he going to suffer many things. See, that's when you don't go according to your own will either. You, it's some suffering that come with that. But he said and be rejected of the elders and the chief priests. You got the big time preachers. <laughs> yeah, they will reject the words of God. <laughs> See, we we small men. <laughs> Who what church you go to? Bro? <laughs> I ain't never heard y'all. I might have seen a lesson, but I, I kind of agree with that. <laughs> we was preaching. We was reading the word of God. You don't agree with the word? Well, I agree with the word. I agree with But that's who we were. But go ahead. and. But this is how people have come to because they go with the preachers that it sounds good. But they are causing me to deny the Lord. Go ahead and read, brother. And he said to them all, if any man will come after me. If any man will come after any man. This, see, and this don't hinge on no nationality. This is just any man. <laughs> are you a, I don't care if you a Chinese man, Korean man, Cuban man, uh, Arabian man, whatever type of man, black man, white man. You still have to do what? Go ahead and read. Let him deny himself. You must deny yourself. And take up his cross daily and follow me. Take off your cross daily? It's a daily cross that we have to deal with and, and, and worshiping and serving God. Because you can't do your own will. You can't deny the one that bought you with his own blood. Go ahead and read. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. Okay. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake. The same shall save it. Now, whoever shall uh, find his life, he going to lose it. If you find all the things that you like to do, you know, you find great pleasure in saying, well, I know what the Bible's saying, but, uh, you know, this is what I'm saying. <laughs> if you find all them type, of, well, this is what I'm saying. I see what the Bible's saying, brother, but this is what I'm talking about. See, if you find all them type of ways and you find pleasure in that, the Lord ain't going to have no pleasure in you, but he said you're going to lose your life, too. <laughs> Go ahead and read it. But well, what is a man's advantage if he gained the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? See, we have to put ourselves on hold. That's why he said you got to deny yourself. If any man going to follow me, he must deny himself. You got to put yourself on hold. There's certain things that, yeah, this flesh we love to do, but we see it's contrary to the Bible. The Bible tells me that I cannot eat the shrimp by saying that these are the things in the waters if they have not fins and scales, they unclean unto you. So therefore, I can't deal with those things. I got to deny myself. I like the shrimps, but I got to deny myself and I got to obey the will of God because he said it's unclean unto me. But he said also what did he said if a man show. What advantage if the man gain the whole world, lose himself or be cast away, right? Because what if you gain the whole world by denying God, what's the great advantage in that? Lord, I denied you real good on the earth when you get before the judgment. <laughs> and you think you're going to have an advantage? Like you're going to be able to just ease on in the kingdom just knowing you denied God. No, that's not going to work like that. See, I did all the things that I like to do, Lord, when I was on the earth. But I wasn't trying to keep the commandments. <laughs> you think you're going to ease on into the kingdom like that? No. And you have to be truthful. Go ahead and um, did you finish that verse? Yes. That was verse, uh, uh, read verse 26. For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words. That's what it's about being, uh, being you got to be, uh, uh, you have to be uh, uh, confident in the words of God to be willing to do them and to deny yourself. Put yourself on hold. But if you're ashamed of these words and you're ashamed of him, go ahead and read. Of him shall the son of man be ashamed. The Lord be ashamed of you. <laughs> so I thought he loved everybody. Well, why he ashamed of you then? Go ahead. When he shall come in his own glory. Okay. And in his fathers and of the holy angels. Okay. Let's go into Numbers chapter 22. Because like I say, if you deny the Lord that bought you, these things are not profitable unto men. It's not going to profit you in a day of judgment to deny the Lord. Let's go in Numbers 22. Let's get an example of a situation on 
uh, this Baalim we're going to read about and how he when the Lord came to him and spoke some words, we're going to see we're going to see how how it went in the beginning with him and how it ended up. Let's go in Numbers 22. Numbers chapter 22. All right, my brother, pick it up at verse nine. Numbers 20. We're going to read a few of these scriptures in here. Numbers 22 and verse nine. OK, my brother, go ahead and read. And God came unto Balaam and said, what men are these with thee? Mm -hmm. And Balaam said unto God, Balak, the son of Zephyr, king of Moab, have sent unto me, saying, uh -huh. Behold, there is a people come out of Egypt, which covereth the face of the earth. Come now, curse them me. Peradventure, I shall be able to overcome them and drive them out. Now, old Balak won't Balaam to curse the people, right? That's come out of Egypt, which is the children of Israel. Go ahead and read. And God said unto Balaam, hmm. Thou shalt not go with them. Thou shalt not curse the people, for they are blessed. What do you say? Thou shalt not curse the people, because they are blessed. This is what the Lord is saying. Now, go ahead and read. We're going to see something here. Go ahead. And Balaam rose up in the morning and said unto the princess of Balak, Get ye into your own land, for the Lord refuseth to give me leave to go with you. Now, he understood, right, that the Lord said you cannot uh, curse the people because they are blessed. So he said, hey, y'all, I cannot go with you all because the Lord refuses to allow me. to." So now he denied himself and going with the will of God, right? right? Okay, that's good. Go ahead. And the princes of Moab <laughs> rose up and they went unto Balak and said, Balaam refuseth to come with us. <laughs> go ahead. And Balak sent yet again princesses more and more honorable than they. Now, see what they're going to do. Sometimes you got me in, they'll bring somebody that has, will send another brother that's more the honorable, the the most reverend. <laughs> send in the most noble. <laughs> they'll bring somebody else to you. No, nah, ain't none more noble and more honorable than God. That's why it's me and it's carrying around these type of titles too. The most honorable, the most reverend. Who is these men that's got these titles? Go ahead and read. And they came to Balaam and said to him, Thus saith Balak, the son of Zephor, Let nothing, I pray thee, hinder thee from coming unto me. This is how you can know this man don't understand nothing about the word of God. Because he gonna, don't let nothing hinder you from coming. Man, I told you the Lord refused to allow me to do this. His word says this, and this is what I got to go with. So now he don't let nothing, ref, don't let nothing. He, he, he knew that they said the Lord, they told him what uh, Balaam, uh, Balaam told him. Go ahead and read, my brother. What verse? Verse 17. Go ahead. For I will promote thee unto very great honor, and I will do whatsoever thou sayest unto me. Come, therefore, I pray thee, curse these people. Curse me these people, right? So now, see, now you're going to do it just exactly contrary to what the Lord said, which is the Lord said, you cannot curse the people for they are blessed. Talking about the children of Israel. Right. So now you're going to get a man that rise up and tell you to do contrary to the word of God anyway. And it's people that's like this. And these are aren't supposed to be. Look, at he's, I'm, I'm saying more honorable men. You're supposed to be an honorable man. And you're going to tell the man to go contrary to what God have told him. How is you honorable? Hey, more honorable. Go ahead and uh, uh, skip down to verse 20. And we're going to read some more of this. Go ahead. And God came unto Balaam at night. OK. And said unto him. If the men come to call thee, rise up and go with them. But yet the word which I shall say unto them, to thee, shall thou do. Now, the, uh, the Lord said you, uh, uh, he said, he already told him, the Lord refused to give me leave to go with thee, right? But now the Lord came back and told him, go ahead, if they come down, because he went back, he going to tell them, let me go ask the Lord again. Like the Lord changed his mind. The will of God does not change. God is perfect. But he going to go down. Well, let me see what the Lord say more. And uh, I let y'all know, <laughs> like the Lord going to change his mind about you going with them to, uh, to curse the people. And I told you they blessed. The Lord don't have to tell you over and over, but skip down. But the Lord is patient. And he do. He tells the Lord say stuff once, twice. Yet man still don't perceive. Go ahead and read. And Balaam rose up in the morning and sat on his ass and went with the princes of Moab. And we're going to see what God did. Go ahead. And God's anger was kindled because he went. Wait, the God told him to go, but then God's anger get kindled when he go. Why did the Lord? Because I done told you what. So see, sometimes me and we going to ask the Lord again, Lord, should I go ahead and curse them? Or, you know, these they've called me down here to teach against them. No, I'm not going. 
people did, you're going to come to the Lord again. He said, the Lord said, go down there, but don't speak for what I say, right? See, Lord use situations, but then the Lord say, hey, get Kendall where you go. <laughs> God, you shouldn't be going down there and, and, and trying to fellowship with these people that want to curse the people of God that's blessed. Why are you going to go try to curse the um, blessed people? Go ahead. And the angel of the Lord stood in the way for an adversary against him. Okay, so the angel of the Lord standing there against him. Skip down to verse 27 and read. Uh-huh. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she fell down unto Balaam. And, ba and Balaam's anger was kindled, and he smote the ass with a staff. Go ahead. And the Lord opened the mouth of the ass and said, and she said unto Balaam, What have I done unto thee? that thou hast smitten me these three times. Uh-huh, skip down to verse 31 and read. And the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam. See, now the Lord had to open your eyes sometimes, because sometimes you don't need real, even the animals might be smart. Look at the ass seeing the angel about to uh, 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 consume Balaam. But Balaam don't need to see, he's just going on still in his own ways. That's why you had to deny yourself and know how, how to do this. Go ahead and read. And he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way. Go ahead. And his sword drawn in his hand. Okay. And he bowed down his head and fell flat on his face. Go ahead. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Wherefore hast thou smitten thy ass these three times? Uh -huh. And the an angel asked him, man, why you smite your ass these three times? Go ahead. Behold, I went out to withstand thee because thy way is perverse before me. Now, nah, see, see how this is? The Lord sent angels. Didn't he send angels to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah? Lord sent an angel to deal with you. That's why the angel was about to smite Balak. But go ahead and read. And the ass saw me and turned from me these three times. Uh-huh. Unless she had turned from me, surely now also I had slain thee and saved her alive. Because sometimes you don't know the will of God. So look, he going to smite his ass, right? Because, man, come on. I'm going this. I want to go this way. I'm going to talk to these men and you holding me up. But now the Lord sent that angel against him. And he don't even see it. Then the Lord opened his eyes and he seen that angel. Oh, man. Now look what he say. Go ahead and read. And Balaam said unto the angel look, of the Lord. Look, what he say? <laughs> I have seen. I have seen. See? So, and then so, see, he, the Lord allowed him to realize this and wrote this story for our example. Because sometimes when the Lord tells you, you ain't got to go back and ask the Lord. Because he might be the Lord sent an angel to stand in the way to deal with you. Because the angel of the Lord was kindled. So he sent an angel. Go ahead and read. For I knew not that thou stoodest in the way against me. Uh huh. Now, therefore, if it did please, displease thee, I will get me back again. <laughs> now, if you don't get too mad, I'll go on back. Now he realized that he should. He was on his own will. So you have to know what the will of God is and be prepared to go with it. But skip down to verse 37 and read it. And Balak said unto Balaam, Did I not earnestly send unto thee to call thee? Wherefore camest thou not unto me? Uh huh. Am I not able indeed to promote thee to honor? Now, see, sometimes uh, 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 God can be holding you back from a blessing all because you accepted yourself. You might be accepting your preacher. Well, it ain't what my preacher said. You might be accepting your friend and doing what? Over the commandments of God. So you have to uh, be careful of that. But, and I'm not saying that denying yourself is an easy thing. Sometimes it's a it's a it's a situation. It's a fight. It's a battle that you have to deny yourself <laughs> to go with the will of God. But go uh, uh, go ahead and read it. And Balaam said to Balak, "Lo, I am come unto thee. Have I none now any power at all to say anything? Uh huh. The word that God putteth in my mouth." That shall I speak. That's good. Let's go on to Mark 14. See what well, he, he came to realization too. the words that God put in my mouth. That's what I'm going to speak. I can only say what the Lord say. I, you can't say things outside of the scriptures because you're going to be in error. That's why I say so, that thou may is overcome when thou are judged. We read that in Romans. Let's go into uh, Mark 14 and pick it up at verse 60. Mark chapter 14. And we're going to pick it up at verse 60. Mark 14 and verse 60. Okay, my brother, when you get it, read it. And the high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, saying, Answers thou nothing? Mm -hmm. What is it which these witnesses against thee? Okay. But he held his peace and answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked him and said unto him, Art thou the Christ, the son of the blessed? Now nah, they rising up on him. Go ahead and read. And Jesus said, I am. 
And ye shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Now, Lord, put that in his mouth to say that. Go ahead. Then the high priest rent his clothes and saith, what need we any further witnesses? Uh-huh. Now, we, we don't need nobody else. We don't need nobody. No, no more witnesses. Go ahead. Ye have heard the blasphemy. What think ye? And they all condemned him to be guilty of death. Go Now, they all condemning Jesus. You, now, you see, you're going to deny the Lord. You're going to condemn God. Condemn the Lord. He wrong. Go ahead and read. And some began to spit on him and to cover his face uh -huh. and to buffet him. Denying and, the Lord that bought them with his own blood. Go ahead. And to say unto him, prophesy. And the servants did strike him with the palms of their hands. Yeah, because the blood of Jesus is what you're going to have to come on if you get salvation. <laughs> he would need that blood on that doorpost. Go ahead and read. And as Peter was beneath in the palace, uh -huh. there cometh one of the maids of the high priest. Go ahead. And when she saw Peter warming himself, she looked upon him and said, Thou art also was with Jesus of Nazareth. Okay. But he denied, saying, I know not, neither understand I what thou sayest. I don't understand what you said. He denied him. <laughs> Go ahead. And he went out into the porch, and the cock crew. And the maid saw him again, and began to say to them that stood by, this is one of this them. This one of them right here. Go ahead. This with Jesus. Go ahead. And he denied it again. <laughs> again. See, sometimes you can deny the Lord. You have to be strong. Go ahead. <laughs> and a little after, they that stood by said again to Peter, Surely thou art one of them, but thou art a Galilean, and thy speech agreeeth there too. Yeah, you from Mississippi. I can tell how you talking. They know your speech agreeing to it. Go ahead and read. But he began to curse and to swear, saying, I know not this man of whom ye speak. Man, I don't know who you talking about. I denying the man, I mean, with, aggressively, vehemently. Go ahead. And the second time, the cock crew. Uh -huh. And Peter called to the mind the word that Jesus said. He called him. to mind what? The words the word of Jesus. Jesus. See, sometimes you call, oh, man, did you? But you come back to your understanding. Go ahead and read. Look what he said. Before the cock crow thrice, thou shalt deny me thrice. Uh-huh. Before the cock crow thrice, you're going to deny me three times. Go ahead. And when he thought thereon, he wept. He was sad. And some of us don't even, when we deny the Lord, we don't even weep. We ain't even sad. All about our business. Let's go into uh, Proverbs chapter 30 and look at something. Because like I said, even by words and works, you can deny the Lord. Even by words and works, you can deny the Lord. Let's go into Proverbs chapter 30. Proverbs chapter 30, and I want you to pick it up at verse 7. And like I say, the Lord said, you have to de deny yourself. Take up your cross. 30 and verse 7. Go ahead and read. Two things have I required of thee. Deny me them not before I die. Go ahead. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Uh-huh. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Okay. Feed me with food convenient for me. Lord, don't deny me these things. Don't give me poverty or riches. Go ahead and read because what? Lest I be full and deny thee. Lest I be full and I do what? I do, you know, man, there's people that's full. They deny the Lord. I ain't got time for that, man. I'm handling my business. Go ahead and read. And say, who is the Lord? Who is the Lord? <laughs> the Lord, man, I've been working hard. That's how I got this. I've been going to school. I got three degrees. I, that's how I got this here. Go ahead and read. Or at least I be poor and steal and take the name of my God in vain. Unless you be poor and steal. <laughs> Let's go into Joshua chapter 24. See, even through works. Like, see, that's why sometimes you got the, you get, you come in the store and if you poor, you got somebody watching you around the her, whole store, right? Hurry up and buy something, man. Why? You wondering why? Because you poor. <laughs> you ain't got 25 cents in your pocket. So what you come to the store for? <laughs> hey, you might, you might be tempted. <laughs> That's why he say, don't, don't deny me this day. Don't let me, give me neither poverty nor riches. Because you can deny the Lord through our works. Let's go on to Joshua 24 and pick it up at verse 20. Joshua 24 and 20. All right, my brother, go ahead and read. If ye forsake the Lord and serve strange gods, then he will turn and do you hurt. What? The Lord will turn and do you hurt if you forsake him? Go ahead. 
and consume you. Okay. After that, he have done you good. Okay, go ahead. And the people said unto Joshua, Nay, but we will serve the Lord. And Joshua said unto the people, Ye are witnesses against yourselves, uh -huh. that ye have chosen you, the Lord, to serve him. And oh. they said, We are witnesses. Go ahead. Now, this word is a witness to us, whether we are denying the Lord or whether we deny ourselves, because the Lord show you how to do it. Go ahead and read. Now, therefore, put away, say he, the strange gods which are among you, and incline your heart unto the Lord God of Israel. What verse? Verse 24. Go ahead. And the people said unto Joshua, the Lord our God, we we serve and his voice. We will obey. OK, so we won't obey the Lord and we're going to serve him. Go ahead. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day and set them a statue and an ordinance in Shechem. Uh-huh. And Joshua wrote these words in the book, in the book of the law of God, and took a great stone and set it upon, and set it up there under an oak that was by the sanctuary of the Lord. Go ahead. And Joshua said unto all the people, Behold, this stone shall be a witness for unto us. Uh-huh. For it have heard all the words the, of the Lord. The stone have heard all the words. <laughs> Go ahead. Which he spake unto us. It shall be therefore a witness unto us, unto you, lest ye deny your God. Now this law of God, he said he wrote all the words in the book. The law of who? Of God. Why he write the law of Moses? Because this is what we did with the law of God. People don't see this in the scriptures. But let's go into 2 Timothy chapter 2. Because if you teach and believe that Christ did it all, then you deny that the Bible teach that Christ fulfilled his part. And you must fulfill yours. <laughs> and we have to know these things. Let's go into 2 Timothy chapter 2. And time always wind down when you're having fun, right? But we're going to make do with what we have. Second Timothy chapter two and verse 12. Look at what it says here. Second Timothy chapter two and verse 12. OK, my brother, go ahead and read that. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. Uh huh. If we deny him, he will also deny us. Now, if we suffer, we're going to reign with him. But if we deny him, he's going to deny us. Right. Let's go into uh, Luke chapter 22. If you did see how the Lord put that, if you deny him, he's going to deny you. So much for Christ love everybody. It's about how you operate with him also. Luke 22 and verse, we're going to pick it up at Luke 22 and pick it up at verse. I want you to skip all the way down. Luke 22 and skip down to verse 39. We're going to skip verse 35 for now. Verse 39. Go ahead. And he came out and went and, and he, as he was wont to the Mount of Olives, uh -huh. his disciples also followed him. Go ahead. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, pray that ye enter not into temptation. OK, go ahead. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, go ahead. Remove this cup from me. Now, even when your soul is heavy and you're going through something rough, Lord, if thou be willing, go ahead. Nevertheless, not my will, not my will, but thine will. Let thine be done. Let thine be done. See, that's a heavy statement, and that's a, a show. The Lord showing you how you have to deny yourself, even when you're heavy and you're going through a, a rough situation. Here, we're gonna skip Psalms 37, and we're gonna go to Colossians chapter two. We're going to go to Colossians chapter 2. Since we winding down, we're going to skip Colossians, the second chapter. But you see how the Lord said, not my will, but thy will be done. That's that's a heavy statement in this Bible. And that's a statement that we have to pick up and learn how to use. Right. I'm still working on it. Yeah. We're working on this because this is where you want to get to also. Not not your will, but let the Lord deny yourself. And even through, we're going to look at something. Let's go into Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2, and I want you to pick it up at verse 20. Colossians 2 and 20. Look at what this said. Go ahead, my brother. Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world. Okay. Why, as though living in the world, are ye subject to ordinances? Now, it's just because you live in the world, why are you subject to do things the way the world do it? How they talk. 
They don't deny themselves. Hey, I'm living my life. Go ahead and read. Touch not, taste not, handle not. Go ahead. Which all are to perish with the using. Now, you see how the Lord tell you about touching and tasting and handling things. Go ahead and read. After the commandments and doctrines of men. After the commandments of who? The commandments of men. See, that's how you deny the Lord. Through the commandments of men. That's how you go away from the truth. That turn men from the truth. Go ahead and read. Which things have indeed a show of wisdom in will worship. Now, in some things, it look like, you know, when I'm, I'm, I'm about to set up the tree in my house, I'm about to get ready for my Christmas, right? It's, 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 like, a, it's like a show of worship, like I honor God, but it's nowhere in the Bible that I should keep December 25th as a day of celebration and worship before God. And then you got too many lies that's hooked up with that. The Lord Christ is not hooked up with any lies. Why you got, oh, uh, Santa be down the chimney around this time in your area. That's not true. So therefore, how is Christ hooked up with this? See, the Lord say, don't touch it, don't taste it, don't handle it. You don't have to do this because you're living it because you did with Christ. The one that died for you. Go ahead and read. And humility. And neglecting of the body, uh -huh. not in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh. So you have to neglect this body and you don't, it's not, we don't, you don't want to have any honor to satisfying this flesh. Because once you start satisfying the flesh, you will go away from the will of God. Because <laughs> it's going to be either you're going to have this flesh satisfied or you're going to go with the will of God. And the will of God sometimes is heavy, but you got to say, not my will, but what? Thy will be done. Let's go into uh, Isaiah 58. Isaiah chapter 58. Isaiah, the 58th chapter. We got uh, a couple more scripts we're going to cover. We should be okay. Isaiah 58 and verse 5. Isaiah 58. And I want you to pick it up at verse 5, my brother. Go ahead and read it. Is it such a fast that I have chosen? See, sometimes when you deny yourself, you have to even go on a fast. Even on a day of atonement that the Lord commands you, you have to deny yourself. No food, no bread, no. Some people want to drink a little water while they fasting. Well, I'm going to go on a fast, but I'm going to drink a little water, you know, to sustain me. <laughs> no, nah, you're supposed to be afflicted. Go ahead and read. A day for a man to afflict his soul. Afflict his soul. Go ahead. Is it to bow down his head as a bull, bull rush uh -huh. and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Now, you calling upon God, right? Go ahead. Will thou call this a fast? An acceptable day to the Lord. Now, it's a, it's a, this is an acceptable thing to the Lord, too. And then he said, you bound your head down. You're doing these things because you're giving yourself up. And it's a it's an affliction. Go ahead and read. Is not this the fast that I have chosen? Go ahead. To do what? To loose the bands of wickedness. Now, sometimes the Lord say that some men fast so they can get power to argue with somebody. I'm going to be stronger than him when I fast and I'm going to go debate with him. <laughs> See, some people do these things. But go ahead and read. To undo the heavy burdens. The Lord's talking about undoing heavy burdens. When you fast, you can undo some burdens. We're going to look at this. Go ahead. And to let the oppressed go free. Go ahead. That ye break every yoke. Okay. Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry? Now, see, you dealing out your bread even to the hungry, helping people out. You ain't looking at yourself all the time. Go ahead. And that thou bring the poor that are cast out of thy house. Uh-huh. When thou seest the naked, that thou cover him. Go and ahead. That thou hide not thyself from thy own flesh. Uh -huh. and don't don't be hiding like you don't know that you're doing the wrong thing. You keep doing your own will. Make sure you know if you're doing the will of God or your own will. <laughs> don't be hiding from yourself. Go ahead. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning. Uh huh. And thy health shall spring forth speedily. And thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy rear reward. Let's go into Mark chapter nine. The Lord is going to re reward you in the end. You re your re reward. You're going to get that reward to enter into his kingdom. Because why? Because you're giving yourself out. You're dealing yourself out. Even to, that's who the Lord, the Lord come back for the poor and needy, for the afflicted soul, for the fatherless and the widow. Let's go into Mark nine and 23. Mark nine. And we want to pick it up at verse 23. Go ahead, my brother. Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believe. All things possible to one that who? That believe, right? All right. Uh, uh, go ahead and read. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou my belief. Help thou my unbelief. unbelief. So now he want the Lord to heal his son here. 
But skip down because I want you to read another verse here. Skip down to verse. Uh, uh, I want you to go straight to the point. Skip down to verse 29 and look what the Lord because the disciples asked Jesus, why couldn't we cast this uh, devil out this, uh, this child here? Go ahead and read. And he said unto them, this kind came forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. See, sometimes when you got some hard situations, some heavy burdens, you got some devils that you're dealing with trying to cast out of your life or you trying to even help somebody else. It's nothing that you can do but fast and pray. This is the only way. But you're giving yourself up. You're afflicted. No bread, no water. Calling on the Lord, bowing your head down. And that's a hard thing to do to give yourself up because, man, them Twinkies look good. See, like they don't look good until you start going on a fast sometime. As soon as you go on that fast, man, that cake look delicious. My mouth drops sometimes. As soon as the, I know the sun is down, I'm fasting at sundown. Once the sun go down, my mouth drops. I say, whoa, this is about to be rough. I still got another 23 hours and some change. Let's go into Luke 14. And wrap this up. Luke chapter 14. Because we're going to look at something what the Lord said here. See, sometimes, you know, if you know your flesh, you want to even up the score. I'm going to get them back. I'm going to take care of this myself. Or I'm going to do what everybody else doing. Everybody else doing it. Ain't nothing happening to them. It ain't about what everybody else doing. It's about what the Lord commands you to do. So you got to look at that because sometimes we don't deny ourselves. But let's go into the last scripture here in Luke chapter 14. And I want you to pick it up at verse 25, my brother. Go ahead. And there went great multitudes with him. And he turned and said unto them, if any man come to me and hate not his father, his and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters. Yeah. And his own life and his own life. Also, he cannot be my disciple. See that because the Lord said he's talking to multitudes. Right. And a lot of people need to hear this. If any man come to the Lord, you must. It's, he said you got to hate and you don't hate your father, and your mother and all these things, even your own self. You cannot be his disciple. Go ahead and read. Go ahead and read verse 27. And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. All right, now skip down to verse 33 and read it. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsake of not all that he have, he cannot be my disciple. See, if you got anything that's, con that's contrary to the word of God, you must deny all. Your mother in heaven, you can eat anything and pray over it. You figure you're going to be raptured off. You don't have to keep God's commandments because he nailed them to the cross. Every day is the Sabbath. God loves everybody. <laughs> yeah, he might love everybody, but if you forsake him, he's going to forsake you and you can't be his disciple. So I hope somebody gains some understanding on this lesson to deny yourself and not God. In Jesus name. 